open the beta flight configurator or INAV configurator and go to the mode tab. Over there you should find a mode called the failsafe. Failsafe. That sounds important and it is. If you want to fly safe you have to have your failsafe configured in the proper way. What failsafe mode is doing? It's enabling the failsafe state. When the failsafe mode is activated your beta flight or INAV flight controller will do exactly what it's supposed to do when you are entering the failsafe. It will execute the procedure you configured to run when the radio link is down. The real question however is should you manually configure the failsafe mode to activate when one of the radio channels enters the certain value? Because with most radio links you can configure the exact values that the receiver will send to the flight controller when the receiver enters the failsafe. That means does it make sense to configure the exact behavior and to activate the failsafe mode when the receiver goes into failsafe? The answer is no, absolutely not. The failsafe flight mode is something of the extremely legacy setting. Yes, it made sense to use it with extremely old radio receivers. The receivers you are probably not using at all and even most probably never really heard of. Those receivers and those protocols were not able to communicate to the flight controller that they are entering the failsafe, that the radio link is no longer working. And the only way to inform the flight controller that the failsafe is in progress was by manually setting one of the channel to trigger the failsafe procedure with the failsafe flight mode. However, now in 2022, all the radio protocols and all the radio systems and the receivers are communicating with the flight controller in the better way. Whenever they are in the failsafe, they will either send a specific flag saying, oh, look, I'm in failsafe, do what you have to do, or will stop outputting the data to the flight controller. In both cases, flight controller, beta flight, INAV, EMU flight will no problem identify the failsafe situation and act accordingly. This is why if you don't own one of those super legacy radio systems, to which to be honest I even do not remember the name, do not use, do not configure the failsafe mode. The correct way to do it is to rely on the protocol and the receiver to inform the flight controller that something is happening without you messing up with manual channel overrides. Because every time you are manually setting something that can be automated, you are kinda pushing the limit of the safety. This is why just don't use it. If you would like to know more what a failsafe is, here is a video for you. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!